Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Second YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a review video of the Ice River KS2 Lite. We do have one in hand. I'm going to physically look at it, look at the differences, look at the highlights, who is this thing is for, look at profitability, what to expect, how to set it up. We'll go through all that good stuff. Um, first, we'll start out with taking a look at it. We'll talk about all that good stuff. So if that sounds good, guys, stay tuned. Let's get right to this thing. All right, guys, now let's take a look at this thing. So we are here in my son's desk. Actually, this is going to be the owner of it. But let's take a quick look at the physical features. So as we look at it, is your typical box style miner. You see two 80 millimeter fans here. As far as the size comparison goes, this is the easiest way to do it. A lot of you guys have some of these KS0s, 0, 0 Pros, etc., etc. And you can see here, it's just about the same freaking size even length with everything so that we can kind of compare so you know what to expect if you were to get this thing it is a jet black it's like a nice matte black actually nice and dark here now let's look at the rear side this is where it does get a little bit more interesting so it does have the two fans in the back and it's just going to be blowing air this way as we look at the rest of it you can now see here the integrated psu which is on the bottom okay and because it's on the bottom it is still getting some of that fan action because you can see the fans go all the way through. It's just going to blow air all the way through that unit. Here is the Ethernet port. You do have your two warning lights, IP record button, reset button, and SD card slot. And then here is going to be for the eventual Wi-Fi. So there still is no currently any Wi-Fi. It is hopefully going to come in a future update, but no ETAs on that yet. Um, so again, when you remove that little cap... If it comes off easy, there it goes. Be able to just put a little antenna on there. Mine did not come with one, so it does seem like they may not come with one. So as this thing does become available, we'll put an update to what size you would need. You can see the PSU down here just has a flip switch. You are going to need a C13 cable to whatever you're going to be plugging into, whether it's 240 or 120. So a lot of us do have these laying around. These are some you can easily access because, again, these are essentially ones that we use for our PCs or other mining gear. Okay, so overall, pretty good design. It is pretty hefty. Again, has the two fans blowing right through it. It is something that is going to be relatively quiet, so it is something that's going to be here on his desk. It'll be humming along in the background, okay? So now let's get to the computer to really be able to check this thing out. All right, so now that we saw that unit, let's do a brief overview of how to set this thing up, check out performance, and then we're going to talk strategy with this thing. We'll look at profitability, all that good stuff. Okay, so for those of you who are new, we're going to kind of speed run through this. Got to find the IP on your network first. I like to use advanced IP scanner, hit scan. Look for the new item. You're going to double click on it. In this case, under manufacturer, it comes up as like Alitech, I believe it is. Double click on it. When you do, it's going to prompt you for the login. The default login is username AdWord, admin, password is 1 through 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Once you have that in, you are in the GUI. Once you are here, this is where you're going to add your pool address as well as your wallet address. That way you start getting paid. Okay, so... My recommendation, have it plugged in for five to 10 minutes, let it configure, let it warm up, let it do its thing. Once it's there, you'll be able to see, hopefully everything is good. You'll see the five minute hash rate normal, fan speed normal, minor temp normal. So now you want to change these settings. So again, you start getting paid instead of this random wallet. Okay, so once we are here, click in minor settings. Once you're here, this is when you use your pool address. You can use your pool of choice. For this unit, we're gonna be using Casper pool. We're gonna be switching over to Casper pool. Pull in, put in your wallet address, hit save. For the new Ice Rivers, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same here, just that I have them doing the three. Put in all three pool addresses. You may get an error or may not let you. So be aware of that. You're going to hit save. Once you are there, you can go back to the main page. And you should start seeing activity on your pool. So once you're on your pool, again, put in your wallet address. You'll be able to look it up. And you'll be able to see the pool activity there. Okay. One new thing we did see on the GUI is the addition of a minor log. So that now there is a minor log. And you click on minor log, you'll be able to see here real-time information. So the benefit here is for any errors, right? Currently, as is, you're just going to see the red blinking light. You got to kind of figure it out. In this case, you should be able to tell you, hopefully, 
what that issue is, right? Is this something he related? Is it getting too hot? Did one of the fans die? Is it a single hash board, hash board one, hash board two? We're gonna have to wait and see. Is it gonna give us generic codes? Is it gonna have a description? We're gonna have to wait and see, but this is something that is gonna help us troubleshoot this issue, okay? So definitely cool to see there. So we can see performance wise now, it's been online for about an hour and 40 minutes. Nice steady graph, which is what we wanna see. Temps are 61 and 68, so overall holding up pretty well there. On the dashboard side, which is again the pool side, again it's been holding up the same rate, about 2.1, so this one is overperforming quite a bit. So definitely something we want to see there. And as far as the unit goes, it is very quiet. It's to the equivalent of, let's say, one of these KS zeros. If the fan is kind of on the higher end, like right now currently these are. These are actually louder than this unit, okay? I would kind of put it on the peg if any of you guys have any like air purifiers that are kind of low sound emitting, that's pretty much it. So this is definitely something you can have in your living room, somewhere in the house. It's not gonna cause a whole lot of sound, definitely easily doable. And again, this is if you're in a cooler area. Again, if you're indoors, it's gonna be in a comfortable temperature. We have ours at like 74 degrees, so that's also why. If it's in a hotter environment, then expect it to ramp up, and in that case, it potentially will get louder. But again, these realistically are more meant to be indoor-type units in more of that ideal environment with cleaner, purified air, so it runs a little bit easier. Okay, so overall, on that note, pretty good there. Um, now let's talk pricing, profitability, strategy, and who this thing is for. Okay, so... Ice River does have it in stock. We do have a promo code through them. We do have a referral link. We'll save you a little bit of dough if you guys are interested. Again, this is a sponsored video. So that information will be there. So it's $4.99 plus shipping. So price-wise, this is something you actually can order if you're in the U.S. from Ice River Direct. And you shouldn't get hit with any duties fees. Okay, so keep in mind you want to be under that $7.99 price point. So you avoid that. And in this case, it does meet that threshold. So something to note there. Again, we'll have that coupon code or referral link for any guys who are interested in ordering directly from the manufacturer there, okay? Now, profitability and everything, this is what we are concerned with. Again, this unit's $4.99 plus shipping, so factor that in. Profitability, though. Daily yield is going to be about $1.95. Electric at a $0.10 cent kilowatt hour, your profit will be about $0.75 cents a day, okay? So... Currently, again, what we're focused on, not necessarily the fiat profitability, because again, that can sway, can go up and down, which right now it's going to be pretty volatile because today's day one for CASPA being on Kraken. So it's going to be a little iffy on the up and down. But again, what we're focused on on yield, and currently yield is about 10.73 CASPA a day. Okay. So the way I see it, again, it depends on your viewpoint, depends on your strategy, how you're looking at things. I value my CASPA at potentially 50 cents. Okay, so the way I see it, this thing would bring in about $5 a day in revenue, subtract your $1.20. And that's the way I see it, at least for now. Okay, so if you are looking at straight profitability and you're going to be taking the electric out of your revenue, this thing isn't going to make you rich. And realistically, even if you're mining and hodling, this isn't a device that's going to make you a ton of cash. Is it something that can potentially pay itself off and be profitable? Potentially, right? There's a lot of risk factors here, and you have to see who this is in reality is for, right? This is definitely for an at-home miner who cannot have one of the bigger ASICs, let's say, depending on your housing setup, if you're in an apartment, in a condo, things of that sort, you want to participate in the network, that's kind of who this is ideally for. Now, not to say that there won't be potential opportunities here, especially mining outside of CAS, but this is kind of where it could potentially be a little bit more lucrative, okay? Mining other coins such as Cedra, such as Bugna, especially in this case where because, again, it being a little bit more of a power monster at 500 watts, but it's not something like one of the bigger units because, again, most of my other units are those 3,500 plus waters, it's a lot harder to degen into like Cedra or one of these others with one of those units. Sometimes it's been tempting, like, ah, maybe it's just solo mine for a while. I don't want to throw 3,500 watts at it, right? Degening into 500 watts, the smaller unit, being able to solo mine on it, because again, those networks are fairly immature, so you actually could feasibly 
do that if you're interested in. I'm personally not too interested in Cedra or Bugna, but we kind of know what's likely to happen here come next year. What do you think is going to happen? Probably going to see other coins on K Heavy Hash, right? And that's where the appeal would be. Like, again, for me personally, I am not going to be throwing my 3,500 waters on any of those, but having something this small, that could be worth degening it. Another thing to factor in here is when we do go to 10 blocks per second, this is another avenue also. This is something that Shai has talked about at a lot of the like mining disrupt and all those where it could be feasible, where even these smaller guys can see new avenues of profitability solo mining. Okay, currently 10 blocks per second increases your odds by 10x to hit blocks. Okay, so we'll see how that comes to fruition, but those are more the use cases here. To me, this is more on the hobbyist side, people who want to support Caspa and they want to do so in a different way. Like realistically, the name of the game would probably be to run your own node, run and mine to that node. Okay, like for example, definitely once this thing goes 10 blocks per second, That'll be the plan with this guy. For me specifically, what am I going to use it for? This is actually going to be my sons. Okay, so this is a great time, great opportunity, great use case for that to introduce somebody into mining. Get them to understand how it works, how to set them up, how to keep them going, how to maintain them, how to like custody your coins. So this is going to be his. He's going to fully take control of it. He's going to do whatever he wants to do on it. And it's going to be his thing, right? So it's definitely a nice avenue, nice way to get other people interested into blockchain, especially with these little aces, because they're so much easier than any of the others. It's a very good introduction into that system. Okay, so like for me specifically, it'll be his. He's going to have his own little hardware wallet. And it's getting him excited about it, right? He got the bug at Mining Disrupt last year. This is kind of increasing that. Now he wants his allowance in crypto. <laughs> Pretty fascinating time. I highly recommend it for any guys who have like teens, preteens. This year specifically because of the bull market, it's a good way to get them to learn to invest, learn about financials. Just because with crypto, everything is so much more accelerated than in TradFi. Right? So after this year, kind of want to show them uh, how the bear market is going to work too. But right now is definitely a good time for that. Right? So to me, that's where a lot of the use case will be. Other considerations here are the difficulty, right? That's the yield right now. That doesn't mean you're going to remain that yield. Currently, we're at 1.35 exahash, right? Which is kind of crazy. And it's only going to continue up, right? Right now, we still haven't seen the effect of those Bitmain units coming in. So expect this to go up. So expect your yield to go down potentially from here. The other big thing is that about 6% uh, emissions reduction that's on a monthly basis. Okay, so... Do expect that yield to continue down. What may help is if we do get this price appreciation as the bull market progresses. Okay, so again, this is at current prices. The fiat profitability is going to look different when Casper hits 20 cents, 25 cents, 30, etc., etc. Okay, so factor all these things in. Currently, right now, Casper is at 16 cents, so that current profitability is based on that rate. People are taking profits on Kraken, so that's why this is going down. Kind of a buy the rumor, sell the news thing. But guys, take all these things into consideration. One of my biggest appeals here is just to see how this unit holds up, specifically that PSU, right? That was kind of our concern with having an integrated PSU. This is going to be a good way to see long-term test-wise how it holds up because we are going to see other ASICs in this configuration that may be a little bit more appealing. As newer designs come out, we'll see those integrations. We'll likely see an RxD variant potentially in the future as well as some of the others, right? So this is definitely a cool new form factor. We're going to check out. We'll see how durable it is. We'll keep you updated, especially if we do have any issues. So, guys, that kind of wraps things up. Please comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Let me know what you guys think of this unit in the comments. Thank you for watching, guys, and we are out.